All right, thanks for watching. And today I want to show you an absolutely beautiful identity that you might think involves Fourier series, but doesn't involve it at all. I will show this identity using pure calculus. And by the way, why is that so important? I actually use an analog of this identity in another video to calculate the integral from 0 to pi over 2 of ln of uh, cosine of x squared dx. And I also invite you to watch that video, it's also very neat. But today is just to prove this really the crux of this uh, other integral, which is this identity. And as I said, you might think it involves Fourier series because it is technically a Fourier series, but the proof is very elementary in the sense that it just uses calculus. So, and the way to do this is let's start with this, the right hand side, and kind of show that it becomes the left hand side. So let's start with sum from n from 1 to infinity of cosine of 2nx over n. And here's the thing, um, we'll, we'll see why in a second, but we would like to use cosine in terms of exponential functions. So remember that cosine of 2nx can be written as e to the i if you want e to the 2 nix plus e to the minus 2 nix over 2. This is in generally true e i theta plus e to the minus i theta over 2. It's cosine of theta, and you can use this using the formulas for e i theta. In particular, what this becomes, it's then the sum from n from 1 to infinity of e to the 2nix plus e to the minus 2nix over 2n. You see, over n divided by 2, so over 2n. And then, let's just, again, a bit... Um, might be illegal, but let's just ex like separate out the sums. So that is really equal to this one half of the sum from one to infinity of e to the two nix over n plus one half of the sum n from one to infinity of e to the minus two nix over n. And here's the thing, it turns out this term can be written as power series because this is really equal to one half sum from n from one to infinity of two to the e to the uh, two i x to the n over n plus one half sum from one to infinity of e to the uh, minus 2ix to the n over n. And you might say, well, we started with the right-hand side. How does the ln appear? Well, it turns out those things are precisely power series for ln. So unfortunately, I wanted to bring my power series sweater that Black Pen Red Pen gave me, but I forgot it at home. I'm so sad. But anyway, we can still do the math because remember, there's this nice identity which says minus ln of 1 minus c, it's sum from n from 1 to infinity, z to the n over n. And you may have seen this as something like ln of 1 plus x is like minus 1 to the n, x to the n over n, but manipulating this, we get this here, and if we use that power series, we get this equals to minus one half ln of one minus e to the two i x, and then minus one half ln of one minus e to the minus two i x, 
And by the way, you're completely right to say, hey, make this thing has absolute value one, so maybe we're not in the interval of convergence. And this is absolutely something to worry about, but today we're just doing a formal calculation. So what this becomes, we get minus one half. Now, ln of this plus ln of this, in real numbers, we have ln of a, b is ln of a plus ln of b. For complex numbers, we have to be a bit careful. So this is technically modulo 2 pi i. And, but as I said, today is just a formal calculation. So this becomes minus 1 half ln of 1 minus 2ix times 1 minus e to the minus 2ix. And then this thing we can expand out and we get a nice simplification. So it's minus one half ln of one minus e to the minus two ix minus e to the two ix. And then this times this becomes e to the zero, which is one. So we get another factor of one. And it turns out this thing we can write in terms of cosine. So this becomes minus 1 half ln of 2 minus 2 e to the 2ix plus e to the minus 2ix over 2. That's exactly what we want. This is cosine of 2x. So in the end, we get minus 1 half ln of 2 minus a 2 cosine of 2x, and you can write this as minus 1 half ln of 2 times 1 minus cosine 2x. But the nice thing is this we can simplify because 1 minus cosine 2x, that's 1 minus cosine squared of x plus sine squared of x and that becomes sine squared of x plus sine squared of x. And that's 2 sine squared of x. Which is cool because at the beginning, we had ln of 2 sine of x. And you're like, where does the sine come from? We started with cosine. So what we have then, it's minus 1 half ln of 2 times 2 sine squared of x. So 4 sine squared of x, and this becomes minus 1 half ln of 2 sine of x squared, and that's minus 1 half times 2 times ln of 2 sine of x, bang, 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 and we get minus ln of 2 sine of x. Ta-da! What have we shown, just unwinding and rewinding, we get the sum from 1 to infinity of cosine 2nx over n. It's precisely what we want, minus ln of 2 sine of x. Which, If you want, it's minus ln of 2 minus ln of sine of x. Okay, and then you're like, well, that's great. So for this video, it's enough. What about the identity with, uh, because in another video, I did the same thing with cosine of x. Well, there are two ways of dealing with this. Either um, you use a similar power series to here. So you wouldn't use ln of one minus c. I think you would use ln of one plus c and then we get minus 1 to the n factors that appear. Or in my opinion, even easier, just use that sine of pi over 2 minus x is cosine of x. So again, assuming that we're not outside of the radius of convergence and stuff, what we get is minus ln of 2 sine of pi over 2 minus x that equals to the sum from n from 1 to infinity of cosine of 2n pi over 2 minus x, and then over n, 
And again, sine of pi over 2 minus x is cosine. So minus ln of 2 cosine of x. Okay, then we would get that it's the sum from n from 1 to infinity of cosine of, I should have used m, but sadly it's just pi n, uh, pi n minus 2nx over n, and because cosine is even, we get that it's the sum from 1 to infinity of cosine of 2nx minus pi n over n. And you see, if n is even, we have cosine of blah minus, say, 2 pi, which stays the same. If n is odd, we have something like cosine of blah minus pi, which becomes minus cosine. So basically, it alternates, in this case, between minus 1 and 1. And so in the end, we'll get sum from n from 1 to infinity of minus 1 to the n cosine of 2nx over n. And then with this extra minus, we get this minus 1 to the n plus 1 that some people see. All right, thanks for daring with me. If you like this and you want to see more math, please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much.